Koch Industries, Inc. is an American multinational corporation based in Wichita, Kansas. Its subsidiaries are involved in the manufacturing, refining, and distribution of petroleum, chemicals, energy, fiber, intermediates and polymers, minerals, fertilizers, pulp and paper, chemical technology equipment, ranching, finance, commodities trading, and investing. Koch owns Invista, Georgia Pacific, Molex, Flint Hills Resources, Koch Pipeline, Koch Fertilizer, Koch Minerals, Matador Cattle Company, and Guardian Industries. The firm employs 120,000 people in 60 countries, with about half of its business in the United States. The company is the largest landowner in the Athabasca oil sands. The company is the second largest privately held company in the United States after Cargill, with annual revenue of $115 billion. In 2007, it was ranked as the largest privately held company. If Koch Industries had been a public company in 2013, it would have ranked 17th in the Fortune 500. The company was founded by its namesake, Fred C. Koch, in 1940 after he developed an innovative crude oil refining process. Fred C. Koch died in 1967 and his majority interest in the company was split amongst his four sons. In June 1983, after a bitter legal and boardroom battle, the stakes of Frederick R. Koch and William Bill Koch were bought out for $1.1 billion and Charles Koch and David Koch became majority owners in the company. Charles and David Koch each own 42% of the company, trusts for the benefit of Elaine Tedema Marshall, the daughter-in-law of J. Howard Marshall and Anna Nicole Smith, and her children, Preston Marshall and E. Pierce Marshall Jr., own 16% of the company. The company has used its freedom from the pressures of public markets to make long-term bets and Charles Koch has stated that the company would go public, over my dead body. History <inaudible> Predecessor companies In 1925, Fred C. Koch joined MIT classmate Louis E. Winkler at an engineering firm in Wichita, Kansas, which was renamed the Winkler Koch Engineering Company. In 1927, they developed a more efficient thermal cracking process for turning crude oil into gasoline. This process threatened the competitive advantage of established oil companies, which sued for patent infringement. Temporarily forced out of business in the United States, they turned to other markets, including the Soviet Union, where Winkler Koch built 15 cracking units between 1929 and 1932. During this time, Koch came to despise communism and Joseph Stalin's regime. In his 1960 book, A Business Man Looks at Communism, Koch wrote that he found the USSR to be a land of hunger, misery, and terror. According to Charles Koch, virtually every engineer he worked with there was purged. In 1940, Koch joined new partners to create the Wood River Oil and Refining Company. In 1946, the firm acquired the Rock Island Refinery and Crude Oil Gathering System near Duncan, Oklahoma. Wood River was later renamed the Rock Island Oil and Refining Company. Charles Koch joined Rock Island in 1961, having started his career at the management consulting firm Arthur D. Little. He became president in 1966 and chairman at age 32, upon his father's death the following year. <laughs> Koch Industries Wood River Oil and Refining Company was renamed Koch Industries in 1968 in honor of Fred Koch, the year after his death. At that time, it was primarily an engineering firm with part interest in the Pine Bend Refinery in Minnesota, a crude oil gathering system in Oklahoma, and some cattle ranches. In 1968, Charles approached Union Oil of California about buying their interest in Great Northern Oil Company and its Pine Bend Refinery but the discussions quickly stalled after Union asked for a large premium. In 1969, Union Oil began trying to market their interest in Great Northern by telling potential buyers that Cox's controlling interest could be thwarted by currying favor with another owner, J. Howard Marshall II. When Marshall discovered this he threw his lot in with Koch, they together acquired a majority interest in the company and ultimately bought Union's interest. 
Ownership of Pine Bend Refinery led to several new businesses and capabilities, including chemicals, fibers, polymers, asphalt and other commodities such as petroleum coke and sulfur. These were followed by global commodity trading, gas liquids processing, real estate, pulp and paper, risk management and finance. In 1970, Charles was joined at the family firm by his brother David Koch. Having started as a technical services manager, David became president of Koch Engineering in 1979. In 2005, the company acquired Georgia Pacific. In 2010, the company was among the first group of nearly 2,000 employers that applied for and were granted federal reimbursements from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under the new Early Retiree Reinsurance Program established by the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act for providing health insurance to retirees too young to be eligible for Medicare. In 2015, the company joined the Ban the Box movement by removing questions about prior criminal convictions from its job application, making it easier for ex-offenders to find work. In November 2015, the company signed a statement of support with employer support of the Guard and Reserve ESGR that pledges Koch will provide supervisors with the tools to hire and support employees serving in the National Guard of the United States. In 2008, the company discovered that the French affiliate Koch Glitch had violated bribery laws allegedly securing contracts in Algeria, Egypt, India, Morocco, Nigeria and Saudi Arabia after an investigation by ethics compliance officer, Igorova Farines. After Koch Industries' investigative team looked into her findings, the four employees involved were terminated. According to journalist Jennifer Rubin, Koch Industries General Counsel stated that Igorova Farines failed to promptly share the findings, choosing instead to give the information to a manager at Koch Glitch who was later fired for bribery. According to Koch Industries General Counsel, Igorova Farines was not fired but instead ran into performance problems, left the company to go on leave and never returned. Igorova Farines sued Koch Glitch for wrongful termination in France, lost, and was ordered to pay costs for bringing a frivolous case. In 2013, the company acquired Molex, a provider of electronic components, for $7.2 billion. In September 2014, along with the private equity arm of Goldman Sachs, the company acquired Flint Group, a printing ink producer, for $3 billion. In June 2014, the United Negro College Fund announced a $25 million grant from Koch Industries and the Charles Koch Foundation to go towards merit based scholarships and general support of historically black colleges and universities. In December 2014, the company acquired Oplink Communications, an optical networking device maker, for $445 million. Subsidiaries Arteva Europe SA, R, L Arteva Europe is an «internal bank» which is headquartered in Luxembourg and manages the European cash flows of Koch Industries. <inaudible> <inaudible> Flint Hills Resources LP Flint Hills Resources LP, originally called Koch Petroleum Group, is a major refining and chemicals company based in Wichita, Kansas. It sells products such as gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, ethanol, polymers, intermediate chemicals, base oils and asphalt. It operates oil refineries in six states. Flint Hills has chemical plants in Illinois, Texas and Michigan. The firm is also a major manufacturer of asphalt used for paving and roofing applications. It operates 13 asphalt terminals located in six states including Alaska two terminals, Wisconsin two, Iowa three, Minnesota four, Nebraska one, and North Dakota one. The firm manages the purchasing of domestic crude oil from Texas and Colorado offices, has four ethanol plants across Iowa, operates three refineries in Alaska, Texas, and Minnesota, and has a refinery terminal in Alaska. The Minnesota refinery can process 392,000 barrels cubic meters of crude a day, most of which comes from Alberta, 
Canada, and handles one quarter of all Canadian oil sands crude entering the U.S. It also operates fuel terminals in Wisconsin, four locations, Texas, six, and one each in Iowa and Minnesota. On July 16, 2014, Flint Hills Resources acquired Petrologistics, a Houston based manufacturer of chemical and polymer grade propylene. Georgia Pacific Georgia Pacific is a paper and pulp company that manufactures a wide variety of household products under the brand names Brawny, Angel Soft, Mardi Gras, Quilted Northern, Dixie, Sparkle, and Vanity Fair. The Atlanta-based company has operations in 27 states. Guardian Industries. Guardian Industries is an industrial manufacturer of glass, automotive, and building products based in Auburn Hills, Michigan. The company manufactures float glass, fabricated glass products, fiberglass insulation and building materials for commercial, residential and automotive applications. The company employs more than 18,000 people and has present activities in North and South America, Europe, Asia, Africa and the Middle East. Invista Acquired from DuPont, Invista is a polymer and fibers company that makes «Stainmaster» carpet, and «Lycra» fiber, among other products. Kosh Ag and Energy Solutions Kosh Ag and Energy Solutions, LLC and its subsidiaries, including Kosh Fertilizer, LLC, Kosh Agronomic Services, LLC, Kosh Energy Services, LLC and Kosh Methanol, LLC, globally provide products including fertilizer and other plant nutrients for agricultural turf and ornamental plant markets, as well as other enhanced efficiency products and technology for the energy and chemical markets. Kosh Fertilizer, LLC, is one of the the world's largest makers of nitrogen fertilizers. Kosh Fertilizer owns or has interests in fertilizer plants in the United States, Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, and Italy, among others. Kosh Fertilizer was formed in 1988 when the Kosh companies purchased the Gulf Central Pipeline and ammonia terminals connected to the pipeline. The next year, the Kosh Nitrogen Company was formed in order to market ammonia. The next few years saw purchases of various ammonia facilities in Louisiana, Canada, and elsewhere, and ammonia sales agreements with firms in Australia, the UK, and other countries. The year 2010 saw the founding of Kosh Methanol, LLC, and Kosh Agronomic Services, LLC. In October 2010, a plant in which Kosh had a 35% stake was nationalised by the Venezuelan government. In 2011, the firm acquired the British fertilizer firm J&H Bun Limited. Kosh Fertilizer has changed its name to Kosh Ag and Energy Solutions (KAES). Topic: <laughs> Kosh Chemical Technology Group. Kosh Chemical Technology Group, Ltd. and its subsidiaries design, manufacture, install and service process and pollution control equipment, water purification and desalination equipment, and provide engineering services for various industrial applications and municipalities around the world. Kosh Glitch Kosh Glitch is an entity of Kosh Industries. Kosh Glitch engineers mass transfer and mist elimination equipment for refineries and chemical plants around the world. As world leaders in process systems, Kosh Glitch has two joint ventures under its umbrella, the Ada Process Plant and Kosh Modular Process Systems. <laughs> Ada Process Plant ATA is the leading supplier of duration plants around the world, with over 400 plants worldwide. The majority of seawater duration plants supplied by ATA use vacuum stripping. <laughs> Kosh modular process systems 
Koch Modular Process Systems specializes in modular mass transfer systems. Typical applications for these systems include chemical purification, solvent recovery, and liquid-liquid extraction. Koch Modular Process Systems also runs a state-of-the-art pilot plant. Koch Minerals Koch Minerals, LLC through its subsidiaries, is one of the world's largest managers of dry bulk commodities, and is also involved in oil and gas exploration and production, the production of oil field products, investments in steel and other markets. Koch Pipeline Company LP Koch Pipeline Company LP, which owns and operates 4,000 miles of pipeline used to transport oil, natural gas liquids and chemicals. Its pipelines are located across Wisconsin, Minnesota, Texas, Missouri, Iowa, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Alberta, Canada. The firm operates offices in Wichita, Kansas, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Corpus Christi, Texas. In 1946 Wood River Oil Co., a precursor company to Koch Industries purchased Rock Island Oil and Refining Co. As a part of the transaction, it acquired a crude oil pipeline in Oklahoma. As a result of construction and investments, Wood River acquired other pipelines in the U.S. and Canada in the ensuing years, according to Koch Pipeline's website. The company bought, sold and built pipeline systems transporting crude oil and refined products, as well as natural gas, natural gas liquids and anhydrous ammonia for fertilizer. Koch Pipeline and its affiliates currently maintain a 4,000-mile network of pipelines. In October, 1994, a pipeline broke and discharged over 90,000 gallons of crude oil into Gum Hollow Creek, in Refugio County, Texas. Heavy rains carried the oil to the Nooses River and on into Nooses and Corpus Christi Bays. The discharge oiled terrestrial and aquatic vegetation, birds, sediments, soils, and other biota. The consent decree was held up for some time, due to a DOJ criminal case with Koch Pipeline regarding non- and under-reporting of discharges. The criminal case was settled in March 2000 and the assessment completed. In 1996, an 8 inch diameter steel LPG pipeline operated by Koch Pipeline Company ruptured near Lively, Texas, a community about 50 miles southeast of Dallas, and began leaking butane gas. The vapor cloud ignited when two residents drove their pickup truck across a creek near a pipeline, the existence of which locals were at the time unaware, while on their way to a neighbor's house to call 911 and report the smell of gas. The two were killed in the explosion, and approximately 25 families were later evacuated from the neighborhood without injury, including a parent who had witnessed his daughter's death. An investigation conducted by the NTSB found that the pipe section which failed had not been shown to have excessive corrosion in a 1995 inspection. Regulations at the time did not provide criteria for adequate cathodic protection. Koch also stated that the bacteria induced corrosion acted quicker than had ever previously been recorded in the industry. The explosion was the only event of its kind in the company's history. In 1999, a Texas jury found that negligence had led to the rupture of the Koch pipeline and awarded the victims' families $296 million. Topic Koch Supply and Trading Koch Supply and Trading Companies Around the World Trade Crude Oil, Refined Petroleum Products, Gas Liquids, Natural Gas, Liquefied Natural Gas, Power, Renewables, Emissions, and Metals Topic Matador Cattle Company The Matador Cattle Company division operates three ranches totaling 425,000 acres 1,720 square kilometers located in Beaverhead, Montana, Matador, Texas, and the Flint Hills of eastern Kansas. There are more than 15,000 head of cattle raised on the ranches. The Matador Land and Cattle Company was founded in 1882 by Scottish investors, whose acquisition included 2.5 million acres in four Texas counties. In 1951, the company was sold to Lazard Frere & Co., which in turn sold some of the Texas land to Fred C. Koch. 
In 1952, Koch formed Matador Cattle Company, and later one of his companies purchased part of Matador Ranch, which was brought together with other Koch ranches in Montana and Kansas. In 2010, Matador Ranch in Texas received the Lone Star Land Steward Award, an award sponsored by Chevron Corporation, Toyota, and the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association for Outstanding Natural Resource Management. Mollocks In addition to pin and socket Mollocks connectors, Mollocks also produces specialized connectors and sensors for equipment used in data transmission, telecommunication, industrial applications, solar power, automotive electronics, commercial vehicles, aerospace and defense, medicine, and solid-state lighting. Environmental and safety record Bloomberg reports that from 1999 to 2003, Koch Industries was assessed, "...more than $400 million in fines, penalties and judgments." Daniel Indivillio, in a reaction piece appearing in The Atlantic argues that the Bloomberg article is biased and misleading, asserting that the Bloomberg team only found eight instances of alleged misconduct by a giant multinational over the span of 63 years. In 2000, for the 312 reported oil spills allegedly attributed to Koch and its subsidiaries that had taken place across six states, Koch paid what was at the time the largest civil fine ever imposed on a company under any federal environmental law for the illegal discharge of crude oil and petroleum products. It was the first time the government had ever aggregated several spills over a number of years under one combined lawsuit against a company. Koch disputed the EPA figures, saying the EPA did not file claims in over half of the 312 alleged cases, and further, that, "...many of these alleged spills are not even listed in the EPA's own oil spill database." In a settlement with the U.S. Justice Department and the state of Texas which included leaks that occurred as the result of third-party actions, like digging. The company agreed to pay a $30 million civil penalty, improve its leak prevention programs and spend $5 million on environmental projects. In 1995 when the suit was filed, Koch spokesperson Ron Howell stated, We've invested over $150 million in leak protection and line rehabilitation over the last five years. We've been able to reduce leaks through that time period by nearly 70% even as we increased our pipeline mileage by over 25%. Between 1990 and 2000, Koch reduced its crude oil pipeline leaks by more than 90%. In March 1999, Koch Petroleum Group acknowledged that it had negligently discharged hundreds of thousands of gallons of aviation fuel into wetlands from its refinery in Rosemount, Minnesota, and that it had illegally dumped a million gallons of high ammonia wastewater onto the ground and into the Mississippi River. Koch Petroleum paid a $6 million fine and $2 million in remediation costs, and was ordered to serve three years of probation. In September 2000, a federal grand jury returned a 97 count indictment against Koch Industries and four individual employees for environmental crimes relating to alleged violations of the Clean Air Act and the measurement and control of benzene emissions from the West Plant in Corpus Christi, Texas. A superseding indictment followed in January 2001. In April 2001, Koch pleaded guilty to one count, related to wastewater reporting it had self-reported to the government in 1995, according to the company. Koch Industries was fined $20 million, of which $10 million was a criminal fine and $10 million to be used for special projects to improve the environment in Corpus Christi. In December 2000, the Justice Department and EPA signed a consent decree with Koch Petroleum Group to spend an estimated $80 million to install up to date pollution control equipment at two refineries in Corpus Christi, Texas, and one near St. Paul, Min, reducing emissions from stacks, leaking valves, wastewater events, and flares. Koch also will pay a $4.5 million penalty to settle Clean Air Act violations and other environmental claims at its Minnesota refinery. 
The state of Minnesota has joined in the settlement with the United States. In June 2003, the U.S. Commerce Department fined Flint Hills Resources a $200,000 civil penalty. The fine settled charges that the company exported crude petroleum from the U.S. to Canada without proper U.S. government authorization. The Commerce Department's Bureau of Industry and Security said from July 1997 to March 1999, Kosh Petroleum later called Flint Hills Resources committed 40 violations of Export Administration regulations. In 2005, Cox Flint Hills Resources Refinery was recognized by the Environmental Protection Agency Clean Air Awards Program for reducing air emissions by 50%, even while expanding operations. The EPA has worked with Flint Hills Resources to develop strategies for curtailing so-called upset emissions in what agency and company sources say could lead to guidance to minimize such emissions from petroleum refineries and other industrial facilities. The EPA described the process as a model for other companies. In 2006, Flint Hills Resources was fined nearly $16,000 by the EPA for 10 separate violations of the Clean Air Act at its Alaska oil refinery facilities, and required to spend another $60,000 on safety equipment needed to help prevent future violations. Kosh Industries won the 2015 Conservation Education Award from the Wildlife Habitat Council and has partnered with the company on conservation efforts for the past 15 years. Between 2009 and 2015, Kosh companies earned 1,085 awards for safety, environmental excellence, community stewardship, innovation, and customer service from various government agencies, businesses, environmental organizations, trade associations, and charitable organizations around the world. As of 2016, the EPA has named Kosh Industries the number one U.S. based parent company in pollution prevention initiatives for two consecutive years. The Georgia Pacific Pacific paper mill in Crossett, Arkansas was the subject of the environmental documentary film Company Town film, released in 2016. The film alleges that improper waste disposal by the mill has caused a cluster of cancer incidents in the area around the mill. <laughs> Political activity Fred C. Koch was one of the organizers of the John Birch Society in 1958. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, many of Koch Industries' contributions have gone toward achieving legislation on taxes, energy and nuclear power, defense appropriations, and financial regulatory reform. Koch Industries has been criticized by the environmentalist group Greenpeace for the role they allege the company plays in affecting climate change policy in the United States. Kosh Industries denied that they have had a negative effect on climate change, saying they have "...implemented innovative and cost-effective ways to reduce waste and emissions, including greenhouse gases." The corporation further claimed, "...Kosh companies and Kosh foundations have worked to advance economic freedom and market-based policy solutions to challenges faced by society," stating, it's a historical fact that economic freedom best fosters innovation, environmental protection and improved quality of life in a society." Prior to 2008, a Canadian subsidiary of Kosh Industries contributed to the Fraser Institute, a conservative Canadian public policy think tank. According to the Institute's founder, the company has opposed the regulation of financial derivatives, limits on greenhouse gases, and sponsors free market foundations and causes. Kosh Industries has come out against low carbon fuel standards. According to Kosh Industries, LCFS would cripple refiners that rely on heavy crude feedstocks to provide the transportation fuels that keep America moving." The Koch Industries website includes an opinion piece from the Wall Street Journal by Charles Koch, titled, Why Koch Industries is Speaking Out. The article states, "...because of our activism, we've been vilified by various groups." Despite this criticism, we're determined to keep contributing and standing up for those politicians, like Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who are taking these challenges deficit spending by governments seriously. The company also funds the political action committee Kochpak.
In a 2014 opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal, Charles Koch wrote about his beliefs on a free society saying, "...a truly free society is based on a vision of respect for people and what they value. In a truly free society, any business that disrespects its customers will fail, and deserves to do so. The same should be true of any government that disrespects its citizens." The central belief and fatal conceit of the current administration is that you are incapable of running your own life, but those in power are capable of running it for you. This is the essence of big government and collectivism." In February 2016, Charles Koch wrote an opinion piece for The Washington Post, titled, "'This is the one issue where Bernie Sanders is right' in which he argued that Democrats and Republicans have too often favored policies and regulations that pick winners and losers. This helps perpetuate a cycle of control, dependency, cronyism and poverty in the United States. See also Energy in the United States Koch family Koch Family Foundations List of largest companies by revenue Petrochemical industry Petroleum in the United States <laughs>